This is Joe Riggio, your host of Socially Joe. Welcome to episode 22 of Socially Joe. In this episode, I know I, I said a couple of uh, episodes ago that I would give you a little bit more insight of another faction of a hat that I wear, which this one is on real estate. So I'm a licensed realtor with Weikert Realtors Hallmark Properties, but I'm not trying to sell you on me. I'm just going to give you some information about what to look out for. So uh, the information that I have is uh, for listing your home, okay? A lot of people ask me these questions and I want to make sure I get these answers to you. So that way, when you go to ask the realtor for listing, you either know these answers or you have a better understanding for them. Uh, so basically, one of the questions I get is, uh, I am, or how can um, I get my house ready for showings and how do I prepare it for a showing? Well, any realtor, would have a showcasing your home list that they should have. And I usually pack mine in my little packet, but in there, I kind of talks about the home appearance to make sure, you know, you remove your dogs and cats from the yard or confine of your area, uh, open drapes, curtains, turn on all the lights, make sure that TVs are off. If you want to have low key music playing during showings, you can arrange fresh flowers uh, if possible, or uh, if it's in the winter, display a color of a photo in your yard of a full bloom. Um, in the winter, if you want to light a fireplace, but since we live in Florida down here where I am, it's more like just open up your lanai and have your pool ready, sort of. Uh, try to stay... Um, Try to stay in one area of the home when it's trying to be shown or not be home at all, which that is a big thing where I've actually heard and seen clients where they try to follow people throughout the house. And that's very a turnoff for someone that's trying to show your house or look at your house. It's good to either be away from your property or take a walk around the neighborhood. It's easy enough to do that. Uh, and let the sales associate who's showing your home answer any questions or objections during that whole showing of getting ready you're showcasing your home. Um, also, you want to make sure it's uncluttered. So any boxes, kids' toys, anything like that, pack them up, put them away, put them in storage if possible, uh, because that way it makes it easier for you to get your stuff ready so when your house gets sold, you have less to pack. Uh, keep it clean. Keep it repaired. This is a good thing to know. Um, obviously, everyone lives in different parts of our nation and different climate zones, everything like that. But every house has to be maintained, not in the sense repaired, but maintained to standards. So if you think that your roof might need fixing because there was a leak, you need to fix it. If you think the concrete out front is broken in your walkway, you need to fix that. Screens, if they got damaged, rescreen them, so on, so on. Uh, keep it neutral. So here's the thing. Everyone has unique colors and tastes that we all like in our house. Even certain, you know, accoutrements of, you know, claw-footed bathtubs or certain or something. But when someone's looking at your house, they're not going to look at those items. They're going to look at something bland and neutral because you got to remember, these are people coming into your house to make sure that they're looking at what they want to see. Uh, keep it inviting. So no dark rooms lit up everything. And, and um, also really fast. I'm just going to go through this. On the outside, make sure you trim, weed, and tidy up your lawn and garden areas. Make sure everything's mulched. Um, make sure that the kitchen's clear, removed of all clean, extra small appliances, everything like that. Even empty out the dishwasher if possible. Um, strain up memo areas and remove extra paperwork. In the bathroom, clean up all toiletries. Put all your toothbrushes and everything away so nothing's out there. Uh, make sure that there's any spots on the carpets or anything like that. Make sure they're removed if with a uh, spot remover or whatnot. Have neutral paint or wallpaper up. Uh, accent with fresh flowers, like I mentioned before. In the bedroom, strain up your closets. Don't like have everything thrown on the floor. Uh, put them in boxes or store them. Same with shoes. Put them on shelving if you have shoe shelves. Um, put the toys away. And obviously in the... Um, 
basement, make sure that it's deodorized and cleaned everywhere so there's no uh, a smell to it. Strain up any tools in the laundry area, uh, sweep floors, clean the grease spots, and get rid of any items that you want to take out because these are things that obviously people tend to not think about as they're showcasing their house, but this is really good to know. Um, the next question I always get asked is, what price would I sell this house for? Well, I can't, I can give you a price. I can say a million dollars if I really wanted to, but that's not the price. I'm not supposed to give you a price as per my license. What a licensed realtor should do is actually give you what's called a comparative marketed analysis, CMA. So with that, what we do is we look in your community and we find out the plus or minus the same square footage, same amount of bedrooms, same amount of baths, and we give you a CMA. So therefore you can see what was sold as the low, what was sold as the high, what is the medium. And we actually show you what's active in your market, what is actually pending, which is already pended, or what has also been sold in your neighborhood. Now, I have had this question from a couple of people as well, where they are trying to look at um, comparisons of houses in another neighborhood across the street, which is not their neighborhood. Here's the thing about that. It has to be generalized to your neighborhood. The reason for that is when the appraiser comes to look at your house and appraises your property, they're going to look at your neighborhood. They're not going to look at the neighborhood across the street. They're always going to look at your neighborhood. And that's something that the, the seller needs to understand, that anything in your neighborhood is what's going to be comparative. And the other, um, the other uh, side of the coin there is I've had people that in certain communities that say, well, my model is the Calico while this one is the Homer in a sense. It does not matter what the model of your house is. Once again, it has to go with plus or minus with the square footage with, the, with your amount of the same bed and bath. That's what's going to sell your house, not the model. So those are things that you have to understand. The next question that I always get is what's the best way to get a contact or get in contact with you? Well, personally, my phone is on pretty much all day. The only time I'm not going to answer my phone is between 11:30 at night to like about eight o'clock in the morning. I'm out of sleep. Sorry, but um, normally you can contact your agent at any good time via phone, text, or email. Uh, email is going to be the best communication point, uh, especially in this new digital COVID world that we're in, well, even though we've had it for years before, but now it's even more prevalent, that paperwork needs to be signed over, you know, line and all this other stuff. So therefore, things can be signed and whatnot. Even closings, I've heard um, recently, have been going that way. So this is where email is more um, fluent to use but I am going to give a little bit of care here, okay? Be careful with your emails and how you send them because if you're sending information that's not protected, it can be stolen. Example, if you go to wire funds, if you're a buyer, let's say, and your agent's saying, you have to send wire funds to this title agency or whatnot, okay? The title agent will send you instructions how to wire funds. The best practice is you print out those instructions, you call up the title agent or title agency, you you make sure that that is them who asked you for the, the information, and then therefore you will then take the information that you've recited off to them over the phone to make sure that's what it is, go to your bank, tell your bank that's where you wanna wire it, and that's how you wire, safely and securely. I've heard people basically email back and forth saying, here's the information, here's the information. And I've heard horror stories where people have lost thousands and thousands of dollars for that. So there are good and safe practices to wire transfer money through emails. So just be careful. And the same thing could be said with any documents that are sent through emails. Always double check, make sure it's good practice. Next one. Can you explain the home selling process from start to finish? Well, there are tons and tons of things that I can go over. And if I do, I'll probably just lose you and lose of interest. So I'm just going to touch points on certain things. All right. Well, 
The first part of selling process is listing your house. You have to get the paperwork in order. You have to sign all paperwork. The agent has to go around and take all the measurements of your, of your property at that time as they're doing it. They have to have the lockbox. They have to have the sign ready, everything. Next, before we get your house on MLS, which is the multi-listing service, we actually have to get photographs and any videos and anything like that because we want to make sure that we showcase your house. So from the day of the listing, we kind of give a couple days leniency in there to make sure you get your house ready, prepped up, as I mentioned, with us showcasing your house and you know all that stuff. And then therefore we can go in there and we can actually just take the photos, do what we have to do, do the videos if we need any drone shots, anything like that. It's done. It's fine. After that, then we activate your online listing through the MLS. So therefore, now the photos are up there. All the measurements are up there. Everything's up there. Even, and if you live in a community with HOA, we have your HOA documents up there. So therefore, everything is to par for the agent who's buying your house to, or with his clients, to look at everything that's on there. Now... When we activate the online listing, it goes out through uh, Trulia, Zillow, um, MLS, all those type, Realtor.com, all those accent points that you can look at. Now, next point is open houses. Let's get these open houses scheduled right away. So therefore, once again, usually they're four-hour windows between like um, – 10 to 2, 12 to 4, Saturday, Sundays, during the weekdays, whatever is more convenient for the seller at that time. Unless it's a vacant property, then it could be whenever it wants to be. Other than that, we want to make sure that we have the open houses. Um, and if it is a vacant property, I'm just letting you know, make sure that you keep on track with your realtor who's coming in and out of your property. Make sure all the realtor goes over checks to make sure everything's locked up and lit up as well. Uh, Obviously, the next point is the agent that you're working with as the seller negotiate offers on your behalf with the buyer's agent. So therefore, the um, seller or the listing agent will come to the client, say, hey, look, I have an offer. What do you think? They'll say, yay, nay, whatever, or this is my counter. Then we negotiate on your back half and say, this is what we think of your offer and can you do better or we accept it, so on, so on. Um, after when the offer is accepted, now the next good point is the inspection period. So the inspection period is listed on the contract of when the offer is first given, but in there, the inspection period is up to so many days. And depending on the contract, which there are different contracts out there, they can either be let out or stick with, depending. But I'm not going to get into that now. So therefore, after when the inspection period is done, depending on if it passes or if there needs to be little fixes, next thing is the appraisal. Now, here comes the big thing is I mentioned earlier about the appraiser coming into your neighborhood to see what's appraising in your neighborhood. So let's just say I'm throwing out a random number here. You started off at uh, 300000 okay? We accepted an offer at 290. Okay. But the properties in there are only appraising for 250,000. Hmm. That's a problem. There are certain things, and this is why appraisals are very stress, anxiety moments. But it as long as you know you have the experience of an agent that works with you and knows and shows you the comparative market analysis, the appraisal should never be that much worry because you're pretty much on point to close enough where you need to be. And the appraiser will look at these things, but that is the next point. After that, you go right into um, managing all the deadlines to make sure uh, related to the contract. So the appraisal, the inspection, uh, make sure the funds are wired, make sure that the closing is set for a great day, which always make sure that whoever is handling your closing, you schedule a closing 